Okay, so let's move forward to looking at uh, some of the three-dimensional structures and flow balances in the cyclone, hurricane, typhoon. Uh, they all have similar processes. This is a nice uh, photo I found at this website uh, showing the hurricane arriving uh, on land. Uh, I don't know if this person is really standing there and watching it, but well, you can see the monster that it is. And the estimates of energy that is dissipated by a hurricane uh, can be up to uh, the amount of electricity used by a country like US over a whole year. So that's a pretty massive energy uh, system. Uh, the main structural elements of a tropical, tropical cyclone are shown here. Uh, it has a boundary layer, uh, so you have near surface uh, winds where the winds are ma uh, maximum and they are maximum close to the eye of course, eye wall and the outer uh, winds begin to die away as you get from 100 kilometers and outward. Uh, there is a inflow in the boundary layer that is uh, feeding the eye wall and these uh, uh, rain bands, sorry, and there is a clear central eye here, so you can see that there is air sinking inside and there is a counterclockwise circulation around it in the northern hemisphere, which is what we call cyclonic flow, and just outside the eye is the eye wall where you have the strongest uh, winds uh, uh, above the surface as well and the strongest pressure gradient happening here. So this air that's sinking is going to uh, uh, compress and warm up and then uh, the uh, water vapor that's in it is going to evaporate and uh, uh, create all kinds of feedbacks uh, in the system. And there is a cirrus cloud shield here so when you have very strong uh, updrafts and convective clouds, deep cumulonimbus clouds that are uh, part of this r these rain bands which bring these sheets of rain as these clouds come in and start to dump uh, rain along the way. And you can see that that uh, tall clouds are going to hit the top of the atmosphere sometimes uh, uh, as high as the tropopause and then uh, go out as cirrus cloud shield and you see clearly the rain bands with strong vertical motions of uh, 10 meters to uh, 25 30 meters per second and you have 8 to 10 meter per second uh, sinking motion here but Interestingly, within the uh, cloud bands, you have these regions where you have sinking motion. So you have these strong uh, cells forming with rising air, feeding the convective instabilities, creating rain, uh, rain and sinking air around them. So you can see this 3D structure. And there is the upper tropospheric outflow. So when you have strong convergence into this low pressure uh, system and you have strongest upward motion in the eye wall that has to go and diverge at the top to allow the convergence to continue to feed this vertical uh, structure and you can see that this is going out in a similar direction uh, and then it's going to go out and then become count, uh, clockwise so you have uh, counterclockwise circulation feeding the rain bands and the eye wall and you have outflow that is counterclockwise similar to things you see in MJOs and so on where you have surface convergence and upper level divergence right uh, there are lots of details about what happens to the air that uh, flows in and how the momentum so angular momentum is obviously greater as you go uh, at a greater distance from the uh, axis of rotation around the eye because the r the distance from the eye increases and obviously angular momentum has two components vr the uh, azimuthal velocity and then a Coriolis contribution as well and that air that's moving in with higher angular momentum is going to uh, have all kinds of waves, uh, wave numbers getting shorter, depositing energy and this angular momentum inflow creating jets in the boundary layer and so on. So these are very detailed structures. Uh, 
lots of new understandings keep emerging as da the, the uh, data increases and observation systems get better, observations increase in numbers, so these kind of massive uh, images from visible satellite image of Hurricane Lewis for example. So Lewis had a minimum central pressure of 943 hectopascal and peak surface winds of 60 meter per second which you have to multiply by I think 3.6 to get uh, kilometers per hour making it a marginal category 4 hurricane on the Saffir uh, Simpson uh, scale. So you can clearly see the eye wall. So the structures, rain bands are she seen here as well with the uh, subsiding air in the middle and of course subsiding air into the eye wall. The models are able to develop these structures even before the understanding is complete. So there is something fundamentally built into the equations and the convection and the energy from the ocean, moisture supply and so on that is fundamentally able to produce these structures. So from a, a fundamental uh, process understanding, the uh, understanding may not be complete but the models are able to produce it. So diagnosing the models for more and more details is going to keep producing more and more understanding. So in that sense the predictions of the intensification, the tracks, uh, amounts of rainfall and storm surge, inundation and all have gotten better uh, far ahead of the process understanding at fundamental uh, levels. Okay, This is a conceptual model of the boundary layer uh, flow in a tropical cyclone illustrating the boundary layer flow here much more clearly shown and there are the flow into the uh, eye wall here strong vertical motion you can see the scale of the arrows changing here so you have vertical motion increasing and then getting the strongest in the eye wall and rapid intensification basically relates to the processes that happen in the eye wall and usually there is not just one eye wall uh, it turns out that these eye walls kind of co uh, converge towards the eye, dissipate and a new eye wall emerges. So there are typically layers of eye walls as well uh, from observations. Okay, And there are the rain bands. The uh, Comet website actually has these animated uh, videos but unfortunately I cannot seem to uh, find them right now. They may be, It may be turned off or it may be in transition or whatever but you can go to the website and find them if you can and watch them. They have a lot of good information. This is showing the details of the thermodynamics. If you think that there is a temperature gradient from the eye wall or the uh, eye to the environment outside, then you can think of it a carnal think of that as a carnal cycle where the temperature difference is giving you the amount of energy that's available, thermodynamic energy that's available to be converted to mechanical energy in terms of spiraling wind and rain bands that are going to dissipate that energy basically, right? So in that sense, you have to explain whether that uh, uh, concept of the Carnot cycle really works. And Kerry Emanuel has lots of nice uh, papers on this, <coughs> uh, detailed calculations and the entropies involved, uh, entropy gradients, entropy advection, and uh, relations with angular momentum, and so on and so forth, which uh, we will see a little bit more later on. So here, radially averaged values of surface temperature. Uh, this one is the surface temperature here, so you can see it's uh, uh, colder in the eye wall and as you go uh, distance in d degrees uh, of uh, longitude or latitude depending on where you are looking, uh, the temperature increases, uh, you can see the scale here. So this is, I think, mislabeled. This is the difference between sea surface temperature and air temperature near the surface. That's a measure of the sensible heat that is uh, being uh, picked up by the system as well. Um, and also the indicator of enthalpy exchange which feeds uh, the uh, cyclone, right? The energy that is needed from the ocean into the uh, cyclone, which is what the cyclone is dissipating into mechanical uh, energy. So the sea surface temperature on the other hand, this one uh, is the difference, sorry. The difference is maximum uh, in the interior. Uh, God damn it. 
and is decreasing out because as you go outside the, the cyclone uh, away from the rain bands, the atmosphere and the ocean are in near equilibrium on those <coughs> daily time scales at which we are looking at these <coughs> averages and the sea surface temperature itself is not changing that much going from the outside to the inside. <clears throat> the sea surface temperature does change a lot when the cyclone actually moves away from the site because the cyclone is churning the ocean down to, down to several hundred meters and setting off currents and mixing. So the waters typically are colder as you go deeper below the surface, as you most of you may know. That cold water is getting mixed up and that's the energy that's getting pumped into the uh, cyclone, of course. Okay. If you look at the 10 meter total uh, radial wind speeds, so this is the 10 meter wind uh, in the uh, uh, horizontal direction and this is in the radial direction. So the radial uh, velocities are much lower of course than the um, total winds and total winds you can see can get uh, pretty strong uh, depending on uh, so eye wall is obviously the quiet one so eye wall sorry eye is a quiet one eye wall has maximum wind speeds at 10 meters but surface winds uh, can be uh, even stronger where the ocean is getting uh, churned up um, Sea level pressure obviously drops uh, into the eye wall. Uh, stronger the cyclone, uh, lower the pressure uh, as you go into the eye. And it increases to uh, the sea level pressure as you leave, reach the uh, free atmosphere outside the cyclone. And this is the adiabatic uh, air temperature, which is high outside and then it cools. So the idea of old ideas that the uh, 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 boundary layer is isothermal are obviously not correct. The air that's converging in is drying along the way and is cooling. So you can see that uh, here. So air is cooling as it comes inside from uh, uh, 20, close to 28 degrees down to uh, 25 uh, and a half or so. So there is a uh, massive cooling and then the uh, relative humidity is increasing and uh, they are serving the uh, rain bands by rising within the uh, rain bands to serve the convective instability and produce rainfall and have subsiding air over here. So obviously it's complicated in the sense you have boundary layer inflow but you also have this 3D circulation of rising air and sinking air. So obviously sinking air is going to be warming. So this is very uh, kind of brief uh, introduction but we also need to understand the balances that happen within the cyclone. So typically in the XY plane you think about a pressure gradient and if there is no friction you are above the surface then uh, you have typically geostrophic balance where the pressure gradient is balanced by the Coriolis whereas when you have this kind of cyclonic motion you are going to have pressure gradient pointing inward because there is very low pressure in the eye and pressure increases as you grow outside so there is pressure gradient force and there is a uh, centrifugal force and depending on the motion you also have a Coriolis which uh, obviously is to the right of the direction of the motion in the northern hemisphere as we know. So if you are near the surface there is also friction of course there is also form drag which we will not address. So the balance here is a basically gradient wind so it's not just geostrophic wind you have centrifugal force uh, and if you are near the surface you have friction, Coriolis and pressure gradient balancing but basically the friction produces uh, a flow that is uh, tilted so it is going to converge and uh, into the eye, towards the eye, so near surface wind is going to spiral in to the eye in this gradient uh, balance. Okay, so this is also uh, what you expect uh, anytime you have a flow going around a bend. Uh, in the cyclone it's much more stronger in terms of the pressure gradient and the winds themselves. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, general idea of how the 3D structure and the uh, 
uh, circulation and wind balances work within a cyclone. Obviously, a very brief introduction, but there are many good papers by Kerry Manuel and so on that you can read up if you want more details. Mm -hmm.